Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Thank you for coming. Always nice to have men in the audience. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate that. Before I get into my talk, I just want to tell you about a couple of things that are going on here in Calgary. Um, so as you heard announced, I am the Heal Your Life trainer, actually, for Canada. So I train people to become workshop teachers and life coaches. And I have an event coming up in Calgary next year, in uh, March and April of next year. So uh, it's great to have local things for that training. Also, this event I have coming up, managing conflicts and dealing with difficult people. I don't know if any of you have ever met any difficult people, or maybe you have been a difficult person. Not sure. I know I've been both. And um, I went and trained in England last year underneath these, these people, Shashank and Sneha. And they were so amazing, I thought I have to bring them to Canada. So I'm bringing them to Canada for a closed event, but they are also going to do a one day open to the public event, which uh, will be on September 29th. And um, all the way from England, India, so it'd be lovely to have you with us. I'm offering a show special of a two for one admittance on that. So September 29th, it's gonna be a great workshop and we'll feed you and make sure you're well hydrated and all that other good stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and get into my talk now and uh, in doing so tell you a little bit about what I do and how I ended up on this stage with you. So mastering your psychology about money and more. And the reason for the and more part is all of the principles that we're gonna talk about today, you can apply it to different areas of your life. Maybe you're looking to manifest a life partner or you're looking for manifesting better health all of these principles can apply to that as well, but today we're gonna to talk about money. It can be a little bit of an uncomfortable subject. I know sometimes I feel uncomfortable talking about it, but I've decided to just embrace it instead and say, you know what? We all use money, why don't we talk about it? We woke up this morning in a house that we had because, or an apartment or a condo, because we used money to put a roof over our head. We probably used money to use some sort of transportation to get here today. We probably have some food in our belly, so we've used money for that, money to get into this lecture series today, and money for the clothing that we're wearing. So money is part of our lives, whether we talk about it or not. So why not find a way to have more of it and more enjoyment around money and less worry? Does that make sense to you? Great. So. You might be thinking, uh, and what makes you the expert? Um, I, would, I would like to call myself an expert on money because I have had none. <laughs> and uh, that'll give you the best experience ever uh, with money. And um, to tell you a little bit more about that, I had to change my mindset. I was doing a job which I absolutely loved. And I was making a, a good income at it, but I employed five people and you know there was expenses uh, that went along with the business and everything else and as the business owner i'm pretty sure all my clients thought i sat home at night counting my money but as the business owner i actually got paid last so there was a lot of stress with that and uh, my typical day would be a little bit like this i would wake up in the morning and i'd lay there with my eyes closed and be like Dear God, don't let me be overdrawn on my overdraft protection. <laughs> and I would think about what was coming up. And I'd be like, okay, I have payroll in two days. I had checks that were going through during the night. I hope that everything cleared. What about automatic payments? Um, what do I have on the books today? All of those little stressors before I even was brave enough to open my eyes. And then I would open my eyes and I'd reach over for my phone or my laptop and check out my bank account. And usually I'd be, whew, made it through another day. And then I would go off and work 10, 12 hours at a job I absolutely loved with people that I absolutely loved working with. But it was just a cycle that kept going and kept going and kept going because I did not have the mindset of getting ahead. I knew something had to shift and I was getting these messages from the universe that I needed to be doing something a little differently. At the time my father was ill and so it made sense for me to move back to Alberta, sell my business, move back to Alberta and care for my father. So I literally moved back with nothing but faith and I kept coming across uh, a business that was making zero money that was for sale but it just kind of kept showing up in my consciousness. I'm like, there's something here. 
So I decided that I would look into it further and I had a little chat with my dad and said, um, Dad, I'm thinking about buying this business. And my dad went through the Great Depression of the 1930s. You know, he was not big on spending lots of money, um, but he's like, go for it. So I looked into it a little further and thought, okay, I, you know what, I'm gonna trust my dad's instincts on this and I'm gonna go for it. So I went for it and uh, was able to get financing with zero money. I spoke to the business owner and said, Here's, this, is, here, this is how this is gonna have to look. I want to buy your business, I have no money. I'm gonna need you to finance me and I'm gonna need 0% interest. And oh, by the way, I'm not gonna make payments for a few months because I need to get some money going first. And I thought to myself, well, universe, the rest is up to you. And things aligned and he agreed to do that and we worked out a payment plan and a contract and everything all official and got things rolling. And what happened with that business is I realized that people were happy to pay me for my services and to pay me well. So I was charging $350 an hour for that particular service in that business. And it flourished because I had completely crushed that belief system that I only needed to charge a little bit. And I realized that no matter how much I charged, there would always be people who could afford it. Or no matter how little I charged, there would always be people who said they couldn't afford it. Right, does that make sense to you? And so, I was doing that and I was enjoying that. This was about two years ago and I still do it and I still enjoy it. But I knew that I wanted to do more and I wanted to work with the business community. So I started working with entrepreneurs, which I still do. And because I had broken that belief barrier, I was able to charge the amount that I wanted to charge. I no longer felt like I needed to give my services away. And then from there, I went to working with corporations and so on, and charging now into the four figures for going into corporations and training their staff for the day. And really, all I'm training them on is how to communicate more effectively with each other. So what I'm trying to make that point there is I followed my intuition. I did my work every day. I was determined. I cleaned up the space between here and here and corrected my thinking and knew that I could have anything that I wanted to have. Keep in mind, not too long before that, I was waking up overdrawn on my overdraft. And the only thing that changed was my ideas of how I wanted to look at the world and opportunity and what I could really value myself at. So, I love this. You know that show, Whose Line Is It Anyways? That comedy show? I decided that we would look at some old belief systems as whose lie is it anyways? We've all got these belief systems that were established in our childhood. You know, save your money for a rainy day, money doesn't grow on trees. You can probably think of some yourself, can't you? Patterns that you've learned in your childhood, in your younger years, as you're growing up. You know, I can't afford this, I can't afford that. Only the rich can have that, and you wouldn't want to be rich because rich people are all snobby. You know, all of these different belief systems that are tossed around in different cultures. So some of those are you have to work hard to get ahead. Money doesn't buy you happiness anyways. Um, you know, wanting money is not spiritual. And you know, in a place like this venue here, where we are all here in service to other people, and, it, and it's a very spiritual and loving environment, sometimes we, as spiritual people, do get those feelings that I shouldn't be charging for my God-given gifts. So we're going to talk about changing those thoughts into positive ways to move forward, making more money, keeping more money, spreading more light into the world. Because the way I look at it is, if you are charging for your gifts, you're able to help even more people. Can you see the value in that? Moving ahead to when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And this is said by different people throughout the last century or however much longer than that, that saying's been going on, just paraphrased in different ways. Um, my favorite is uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer, this book, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. I have it um, at my booth back there, but I wanted to just talk about changing those negative belief systems that I was mentioning earlier into these positive affirmations. And are you all familiar with affirmations? So personal, positive, present tense statements. So money comes to me easily and effortlessly. 
Money buys me freedom and choices. I use money to make a difference. I have a savings plan and a spending plan. Takes the fear right out of it, doesn't it? So some other things that I wanted to touch on is I am all about the money and I love it because it's okay to be about the money. We don't have to pretend that we don't want it because as we established earlier, we all need it. My money is constantly increasing and I can afford anything. Now I've got to tell you, the first time I said that, it felt false. I can afford anything. But I'm going to reframe it for you. I didn't say I can afford everything. I can afford anything. So if there's something there that, that you've got your heart set on, maybe it's something like a house or a trip or a vehicle, maybe you want to write that book that you've got inside you and take a few months off of work to do that. Maybe you want to start your own business. Maybe it's selling um, jewelry that you make. Maybe it's something more corporate. Whatever it is, just really focusing in on that goal and knowing I can afford anything, but it does require the focus. And we're going to talk about how to do that. So again, back to our childhood. You better watch your mouth. Have you heard that before? I come from a generation where we used to literally get our mouths washed out with soap. I don't think they let you do that anymore, but just as important as washing, watching your mouth is also watching your thoughts and your actions, right? So if you are practicing good affirmations and that kind of thing, and then all day long saying, I can't afford that, I can't afford that, I can't afford that, oh, I'd like to, I would like to go to Starbucks today, uh, but I can't afford that. You know, you're just canceling out the positive that you've put in. So just learning to really watch your thoughts, not just your mouth. Also your actions, right? I had a really good example of this the other day. Um, I went to uh, see a banker friend of mine, and I know that she was raised quite well off. And it was interesting because I was walking by a coffee shop and I thought, oh, I'll just take her a coffee. So I go in and I take her a coffee, and she's like, oh, I don't drink coffee, I only drink tea. So what I would have done, because I'm still developing my skills, thank goodness, I hope I never stop, still developing my skills, I would have went and found somebody to give the coffee to, right? But she was like, oh, that's okay, I don't drink coffee, and she just sat it on the corner of her desk and didn't feel the need to give it to someone else. She was okay with it just being the way it was. And I thought to myself, Victoria, this is a really good lesson right here on just actions. There was absolutely zero lack attached to her actions. Um, here's a good one for you. I am 52, and when I turned 50, I thought to myself, I should have more money in the bank. I'm a full-out adult now. I'm 50. And then I started thinking, should I? Well, I could. I could have more money in the bank, but you know why I don't? Because I like doing things. I like having experiences. I like taking my family places. And then I was able to let go of all of that guilt about what I should have. Does that make sense? Because that was just a tape that somebody else was playing that really wasn't me at all. So moving on to like never and always, you know, I never can afford to take vacation. Using those kind of blanket statements really becomes a habit and the accuracy of them can be really thrown off. And uh, another one is the but and the and. And a lot of times women can really relate to this one. I, wanna, I want to take some time to, to write my book. I want to have a corporate career. I want all of these things. Um, but I also want to raise my children. But what if we change that to and? I want the corporate career, I want to write my book, and I want to raise my children. And finding a way to make it all work together. Ah, oh, I love this guy. You know what's so great about this slide? It doesn't matter what's going on with my hair, his is always worse. <laughs> so I want to talk about the money being energy. So I'm gonna do a quick little visualization with you, and you can keep your eyes open or closed, doesn't matter to me, but let's think about a $100 bill. So first of all, put yourself at home in front of your kitchen table, and there's a $100 bill laying on your kitchen table. And you had opened a card this morning from your aunt, 
and she remembered your birthday and she sent you a hundred dollar bill and it's so sweet. You know, she doesn't have a lot of money, but she's always thinking about other people and wanting to help. So, you know, I bet you're just wanting to use that money to go out and buy something really special for yourself and then you'll call Auntie up and say, Auntie, thank you so much. This is what I used it for. There was a sweater I had my eye on and I just really appreciate it so much. Thank you for that. Okay, so we're gonna move into the next segment with the same $100 bill. So this next segment with the $100 bill, you had a wild party at your house last night. Everybody was drinking a little too much and there was purses laying all over the place and this one lady's wallet kind of fell out and the money fell out of it and you didn't really pay too much of attention but you kind of shoved it to the side. And the next day, you're sitting there with the $100 bill on your table and you realize that you kind of sort of stole that from your friend. And what you're feeling is that really deep shame of now what do I do? Do I own up to it? Do I tell her that I did it? Oh, it just feels awful. I don't even know what to do with it. Maybe I'll donate it somewhere, but I could really use it. I don't know what to do. Just a stressful, yucky feeling, right? Okay, so let's move on to the next segment with the $100 bill. Oh my God, I hate my job. Every day, same thing. I go into work, everything's fine. By 9.30, somebody's really pissed me off. And I try and I try to not let them affect me. But, you know, it's just like they just pick, pick, pick. They say one thing, they want another. And I come home and all I have to show for that is this $100 bill. So, moving on to the next segment of the $100 bill. I had the most amazing day today. I don't even know why they call it work. I go in, I hang out with my friends, you know, I get my clients or people that I really enjoy being with. You know, it's just a fabulous way to spend the day. And I got paid this $100 for it. All right, so we've looked at four different ways to look at $100. Does that make it clear how money is energy? The $100 bill did not change. The way you looked at it changed four times. Money is energy. So by raising our vibration to the amount of money that we want to be making and seeing in our lives and the abundance around us, we match ourselves to it and match the emotion. And the emotion is the strong piece that keeps it all together. So just to quote Einstein, Everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality that you want and you cannot help but get that reality. It is not philosophy, it is physics. So I'm gonna give you a couple of other quick examples on that. How many of you have noticed that you'll think of somebody you haven't thought of in years and you'll think of them and then the next day you run into them in the mall or you get a friend request on Facebook or something like that? that those people show up in your life some way. So it's again, matching that energy. Or maybe you notice that there's like a, a new type of jacket that you're attracted to. Everywhere you look now, you're seeing this jacket. Um, numbers, this happens to me all the time with numbers. I, I'll see the, a number sequence somewhere and then I see it everywhere. Uh, just the other day, you're coming to the show, twice in one day I paid for something that came to 777. It's like, hmm, this is a good day, noticing the numbers, right? Everything is drawn together. So thinking about what your money energy is. So what is your biggest fear about money? And just kind of plant that thought in your head because we're gonna come back to it in a couple minutes. What is your biggest fear about money? What did you learn about money in your past, like in your childhood, for example? What were your parents' beliefs about money? So sometimes, you know, our parents' beliefs, we had one that was a spender and one that was a saver, and so there was a lot of contrast going on. And sometimes, you know, they would keep it really secret and behind closed doors because you don't talk about money. And other times, it was argued about over the kitchen table while you're trying to eat your dinner. Not really good for digestion, but you'll have those memories, right? And then thinking about how you handle money now and how that all ties together, ties in to what your money energy is. And when we're looking at money energy, we also have to look at the false benefits that we get. 
from our, our belief system around money. So say for example, maybe, it, maybe there's a payoff to being a victim. Aww, I'd love to go on vacation. You're so lucky. I just don't get to go on vacation. I can't afford to go out for dinner. You know, you, that whole payoff to being a victim. I can't, I can't go out with my friends to Banff this weekend, so I'm gonna just have to sit at home with my big bucket of popcorn, watching some Netflix maybe with my cat, right? You get to have that payoff of not going out and doing things and being the victim. So thinking about what that is, and then think about what it would be like if you had the money that you wanted. And so I talk about the four F's here. The fear, the fear of the money, the fear of not having the money, the fear of having the money, because there is both sides to that. The focus and the faith to get the money, to know that that abundance, whatever area of your life it is in, is going to show up if you put the focus and the faith to it and you can achieve that fortune. And again, like I said earlier, you can apply this to any area of your life. So whether it is around money, whether it is around relationships, whether it is around health, whatever it is, you can create it. So what would you like to change about your money consciousness? Do you feel worthy of having money? You know, a lot of times there's stuff going on that we don't even realize. You know, you see it with education. You know, the first people in the family to get a university degree, or, you know, for in my example, my father was a farmer, and we didn't have a lot of money. My mother was a pastor of a church back in the day when you were paid just a percentage of the tithings, and I think, we, I think she brought in somewhere around 200 to $400 a month every month. You know, and so, and for myself and my siblings to move forward, we had to get past that it was okay to do that. And, you know, moving out of that belief system and knowing that we are not surpassing our parents, but we're just moving forward with, with what is our life's purpose. So some tips here that I really like is thinking back to that biggest fear that we talked about a moment ago and rewriting that as an affirmation in your mind. So say for example, your biggest fear about money is, I never have enough. And rewriting that into, you know, I always have enough money for everything that I need to do. My income is always greater than my outflow. Just rewriting your biggest fear into an affirmation. Another one that I really like is writing a letter about your relationship with money. So you're writing the letter to money, and this might sound a little awkward here, but I'm gonna give you an example that will make it very real to you. So I did this exercise and I was blown away by what I wanted to say to money. So it went something like this. Dear money, you're only there for the good times. You're never there when I need you. When the going gets tough, you're nowhere to be found. You always leave me alone to deal with everything. Sure, when things are going well, you show up. Thanks a lot for that. You know, do you understand how that can be so deeply emotional to write that letter to money? So I would encourage each of you to go ahead and do that and just see what comes up for you. It was really interesting for me. And of course, praising yourself for everything that you've done with money so far. You know, it's one thing to, to sit around and be like, oh, I'm broke, my car needs new tires, blah, 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 right? But think about the things that you have done. Well, you've bought the car that needs new tires, so, so that's an accomplishment. You do have a roof over your head, that's an accomplishment. You have actually managed to get to this place in your life exactly where you're sitting today, managing money. That needs to be celebrated. And also to practice the gratitude around that, to be thankful for the opportunities. And you know, I learned this lesson very, very young, and I don't even remember who it was who said it to me, but I was so grateful. Um, I was in my late teens, and I was paying bills, and I was complaining about it. That was back in the day when we wrote a check, and we sent it to the utility company. And this, this person said to me, write a thank you note with your check. Right? Thank you for providing me with the electricity or whatever it happened to be um, for the last month. I really appreciate it. And um, it just shifted my whole way of thinking about paying my bills. 
I then became grateful to be able to pay my bills. First of all, I've been able to earn the money to pay my bills. And secondly, somebody has provided me with credit to be able to enjoy the service for that month prior to being able to do it. So I want to really encourage you now as we move into a brand new month, I'm always excited when we move into new things, you can have a new start right away. So thinking to yourself, what action step can I take? What can I implement right now? And not being worried about starting, but rather being worried about what will happen if you don't start. So let me encourage you to leave here today and to go home and really put some thought into what it is that you want about money. Is it to build your business? Is it to take the kids or the grandkids on a vacation or yourself on a vacation? Is it to, to write your book and take the time off work to do that? Figure out what it is that you need and be very specific and know that you can use your thoughts to change your reality. And if you have any more questions about this, I'm doing mini coaching sessions back in the booth and I'd be happy to go through it with you because really what I want to help you do is to really strategize around um, what it is that you want, to clarify that, to get your goals in line, really to optimize what you need to do to be able to live the life that you want. So thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you.